Good morning. Good morning. And welcome to St. George. Today is the 26th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Our celebrant this morning is Father Tiago da Silva. Please stand. my dear brothers and sisters let us begin in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit Amen. the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all Amen. brothers and sisters we welcome you to our faith community today we are called to discern God's will in our lives and follow it as Jesus did. Lord Jesus, you emptied yourself to become human. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you were obedient unto death. Christ, have mercy. Christ, Christ have, have mercy. mercy. Lord Jesus, you are exalted in the glory of God. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us praise God with our glory. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Most High, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. We pray this morning for the repose of the soul of Martin Fohan. Let us pray also for his family, for our families. O God, who manifest your mighty power above all by pardoning and showing mercy, bestowed, we pray, 
Be your grace abundantly upon us and make those hasten to attain your promises heirs to the treasures of heaven. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord, you say, the Lord's way is not fair. Hear now, house of Israel, it is my way that is unfair, or rather, are not your ways unfair? When someone virtuous turns away from virtue to commit iniquity and dies, it is because of the iniquity he committed that he must die. But if he turns from the wickedness he has committed and does what is right and just, he shall preserve his life. Since he has turned away from all the sins that he has committed, he shall surely live, he shall not die. The word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. God. Remember your mercies, O Lord. Remember Remember your your mercies, mercies, O Lord. Lord. Your ways, O Lord, make known to me. Teach me your paths. Guide me in your truth and teach me, for you are God my Savior. Remember your mercies, O Lord. Remember that your compassion, O Lord, and your love are from of old. The sins of my youth and my frailties remember not. In your kindness remember me because of your goodness, O Lord. Remember your mercies, O Lord. Good and upright is the Lord. Thus he shows sinners the way. He guides the humble to justice and teaches the humble his way. Remember Remember your mercies, O Lord. Lord. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, if there is any encouragement in Christ, any solace in love, any participation in the Spirit, and compassion and mercy, complete my joy by being of the same mind and with the same love, united in heart, thinking one thing. Do nothing out of selfishness or out of vainglory. Rather, humbly regard others as more important than yourselves, each looking out not for his own interests, but also for those of others. Have in you the same attitude that is also in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God something to be grasped. Rather, he emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, coming in human likeness and found human in appearance. He humbled himself, becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Because of this, God greatly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend, of those in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. 
Jesus said to the chief priests and elders of the people, what is your opinion? A man had two sons. He came to the first and said, son, go out and work in the vineyard today. He said in reply, I will not. But afterwards changed his mind and went. The man came to the other son and gave the same order. He said in reply, yes, sir, but did not go. Which of the two did his father's will? They answered, the first. Jesus said to them, Amen, I say to you, tax collectors and prostitutes are entering the kingdom of God before you. When John came to you in the way of righteousness, you did not believe him, but tax collectors and prostitutes did. Yet even when you saw that, you did not later change your minds and believe him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. My dear brothers and sisters, in the Gospel today, Jesus teach us to humbly submit to the Father's will. Jesus said to the chief priests and elders of the people, what is your opinion? A man had two sons. He came to the first and said, son, go out and work in the vineyard today. He said and replied, I will not but afterward changed his mind and went. The father came to the second son and gave the same order. The second son said in reply, yes, sir, I will, but he did not go. Which of the two did the father's will? They answered, the first. Jesus said to them, truly I say to you, even the publicans and prostitutes will enter the kingdom of God before you. Jesus gave this parable to the scribes and Pharisees, and the church does the same with us today. Because Jesus wanted them to understand that John the Baptist showed the way to salvation. And the church every day is showing to us the way to salvation. In a lot of people, they just turn away. They don't want to pay attention in what Jesus said. They don't want to pay attention in what the church is teaching us today. So my dear brothers and sisters, they knew about God. The people in Jesus' time they knew about God and how difficult it was for them, how difficult it was for them, and it's still difficult for us today. We have everything we need to believe in God and we're still not doing so. We have everything. You have the church teaching, we have Mass, we have the Eucharist, we have everything we need, and we still do not believe in God. What we need to do, what we need to do, we need to turn to that sign. We need to turn our faith, we need to turn our heart to that sign. If you don't see on the cross a sign of salvation, we, we still not believe in God. He is our salvation in that sign. So the problem today, we don't want to look at that. We want everything easy. We want everything better. But we forget that in Jesus, when he gave his life on that cross, that sign became for us a sign of salvation. God is calling us every day 
to do His will. God is calling us every day to do something in our church. For example, how many ministries we have in our church and we do not pay attention when we are called to do something as a volunteer, it doesn't matter. But here, the ministries we have and we still say no. We know that a lot of people, they say yes, but a lot of them say no. I don't want to work. I don't want to do anything in the church. I just want to go for mass and stay there for 30 minutes, 40 minutes, one hour. No more than one hour. No more than one hour. <laughs> but if you go to the concert, we're going to stay there two, three hours, one, two hours before we can enter in. So, yeah, but for the church, just 40 minutes, 30 minutes, one hour, no more than that. Why? Because we still not understand God's will. He is the place for us. If you want to understand salvation, we need to place ourselves here. I know it is difficult. Again, because when we look at the cross, we don't see salvation. Jesus is telling us today through this parable, we, all of us, we need to go and work in God's vineyard. And he is God's vineyard. When I was young, I took catechism classes, and I remember that my sister, the teacher, told me that I come to know God's will through my parents' will, and by following the commandments and following the teachings of the church. So how many of us, when we were children, would tell our parents, we would do what they wanted us to do, but then later, we didn't do it. Our parents would tell us to make our bed, to wash the dishes, or to do our homework. No kids? So to do our homework, or to take out the trash. And we would say, okay, I will do it. But then, didn't do it. Because we would rather go to a friend's house, watch TV, play video game, and therefore, we got in trouble. Even though we may have been told that God speaks to us through the will of our parents, we really didn't think about it at that time. Later, when our teenage years, we became smarter and had a great confidence in telling our parents, for example, what we really thought. We may even have talked back and agreed, trying to convince them that we know the best for us. And so if our parents would say, don't stay out late, or don't drive too fast, or don't drink alcohol if they offer it to you, stay away of kids who take drugs, how many things our parents, you know, they have uh, told us? So perhaps we would argue with our parents and say, I don't see anything wrong with my friends. I don't see anything wrong in what you are telling me. Then, later, after a little bit of quarrel, we, saw, we would say, okay, I will do it and we go and do. We do not take alcohol, we don't drive fast. So my dear brothers and sisters, we began to see that things would go better for us if we understand our parents' will. We will see that things are going to be better for us if we understand as Christians that God's will for each one of us. This is the reason why we are here. This is the reason why we spend this time every Sunday or every day before Jesus, our Savior, to understand that He has the best thing for us. We are not created for this world. We are created for eternal salvation, for the eternal world, with Jesus, with God, through the Holy Spirit. We need to start to pay attention to it. So, 
we begin to see that things are better when we are with God. My dear brothers and sisters, God cares for us. He loves us. He loves us. We are facing now this difficult time I put in the bulletin. If you have the opportunity to read um, the article for today's uh, gospel, I put in the bulletin how many people they are leaving the church. And I, I said this one day here. How many people are leaving the church because of this pandemic time? Because they think that God needs to do what they want. It's not because we are having this pandemic time God does not love us. Yes, He is still loving us. He is still. And He will. He cares for us. And other says, Oh no, this is God's desires or wishes. No, it is not. This is because of these, our hearts. If you don't place our hearts in this altar, if you don't offer to God our hearts, our lives, as a sacrifice acceptable to him, we will not change this world. It's the same in your family, correct? If you don't place your hearts, if you don't place your life, your parents or your children, if you don't place your heart and your life in your family and see that you need to do the best for them, you will not change your family or something wrong that is going on there. It is not depends only on God. It depends on you as well. And you first. And you first. So place yourself. Place your lives. Place the lives of your family, your heart, in this altar as a sacrifice acceptable to Him, to God. As St. Paul said, we should not we should do nothing out of selfishness or vainglory, each not looking for his own interests, but also for those of others. And in this way, we shall have compassion and mercy, united in heart, humbly regarding others as more important. And we need to understand, this is going to happen if we have our hearts here, in this community, as a community of faith. Everything can happen in our lives if we do as a community of faith. Do not try to do something by yourself, alone. No, do things as a community, as a family. So today and every day, may we not be like the chief priests and the Pharisees and the son who said yes, but then later refused. Rather, may we who are sinners turn away from our sins and always seek to do God's will and therefore be like the Son who did his Father's will and so greatly pleased him. As we prepare to receive Jesus in the Eucharist, let us acknowledge the humility of God as he obediently comes down upon the altar under the appearance of bread. May you imitate his wondrous love, empathizing ourselves for the sake of others, submitting our will and desires for the sake of others. And let us ask our Blessed Mother Mary to help us respond to God's will with an obedient and humble heart as she totally and completely submitted her will, her entire life, and especially as she said, let be done with me according to thy word. So here we are to do the will of God.
Let us together profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, the Father before all ages, Lord from God, light from light, to God from to God, begotten not made, consubstantial to the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate for the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, who was crucified in the Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has brought the prophet. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters, called to be disciples, we offer our prayers to God in confidence. For the power of the Holy Spirit to help us, the church on earth, to love one another and live in unity, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For God to lead those in authority in their efforts toward protecting all human life from conception to natural death, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For God in his goodness to provide the unemployed and underemployed with work that will provide for their needs, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our faith community to grow in mercy and compassion, joyfully imitating Christ our Savior, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the peace of Christ to calm violence in our homes and in our communities and guide those in public safety in their intervention. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, to rejoice with the saints in God's everlasting kingdom, especially Martin Forehand, for whom we remember at this Mass, as well as Rosilia Decano and John Denby. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those intentions in our book of prayer that we silently place before our loving God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Love God, we thank you for your steadfast love and abundant grace. Please hear and answer our prayers this day according to your will. We ask this through Jesus, your Son. Amen. Amen. The saint and the sinner, your friends Now reconciled in this banquet divine The promise of life without end The promise of life without end Here in your presence, the greatest star least the burden find rest and the hungry can feast. By love we're invited, here mercy prevails. God in your goodness we share a place at your table. A place at your table. From this communion in one heart.
the greatest star least the bird and fine rest and the hungry can feast by love we're invited here mercy prevails god in your goodness we share a place at your table a place at your table to bring liberty to the captives and sight to all who are blind we are sent in love empowered by your bread of life here in your presence the greatest our least the burden find rest and the hungry can feast by love we're invited here mercy prevails god in your goodness we share here in your presence the greatest our least the burden find rest and the hungry can feast by love we're invited here mercy prevails god in your goodness we share a place at your table 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 together my dear brothers and sisters that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice in your hands for the praise and the glory of his name for our good and good also for the church. Grant us O merciful God that this our offering may find acceptance with you and that through it the wellspring of our blessing may be laid upon before us. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. He is right and just. He is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Father of mercies and faithful God. For you have given us Jesus Christ, your Son, as our Lord and Redeemer. He always showed compassion for children and for the poor, for the sick and for sinners, and he became a neighbor to the oppressed and to the afflicted. By word and deed, he announced to the world that you are our Father, and that you care for all your sons and daughters. And so, with all the angels and saints, we exalt and bless your name and sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy and to be glorified, O Lord, who love the room, human race and who always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son, present in our midst, when we are gathered by his love, and when, as once for the disciples, so now for us, he opens the scripture and breaks the bread. 
Therefore, merciful Father, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, Jesus took bread, said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, what supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks. He gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith When we eat this bread And drink this cup We proclaim your death, O Lord Until you come again Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Savior, whom you led through the, his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at the right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again, and we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the oblation of your church, in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that he has been handed unto us, and grant that by the power of the spirit of your love we be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son, in whose body and blood we have communion. Bring your church, O oh Lord, to perfect faith and charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Robert, our Bishop, with all bishops, priests, and deacons, and the entire people you have made your own. Open our eyes to the needs of your bro our brothers and sisters, inspiring us words and actions to comfort those who labor and are burdened. Make us serve them truly after the example of Christ and his command. And may your church stand as living witness to truth and freedom, to peace and justice, that all people may be raised up to a new hope. Remember our brothers and sisters, especially today, Martin Fohan who have fallen asleep in the peace of Christ, and all the dead whose faith you alone have known, admit them to rejoice in the light of your face, and the resurrection give them the fullness of life. Grant also 
to each one of us. When our earthly pilgrimage is done, that we may come to eternal dwelling place and live with you forever. There, in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Saint Joseph, her spouse, with the apostles and martyrs, with Saint George, and with all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unit of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and form the divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Today our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of our mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to apostles, Peace, I leave you, my peace, I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy. of the world have mercy on us Lamb of God you take away the sins of the world grant us Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Have are we called the Supper of the Lamb? Lord, I am not worthy that you enter into my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ keep us safe for eternal life. Amen.
For those of you who are unable to be with us at Mass today and receive Holy Communion, you can make a spiritual communion. Spiritual communion recommended by the saints for centuries is a prayer professing faith in Jesus' presence in the Eucharist and inviting him to live in our hearts. You make a spiritual communion by beginning with an examination of your conscience and making a good act of contrition. We will pause here to allow you to do so. This type of communion can never replace receiving our Lord Jesus in Holy Communion at Mass, but it can help us to stay close to Jesus in the most blessed sacrament of his body and blood in his extraordinary time. Now we will say a prayer given to us by St. Alphonsus Liguori for the purpose of inviting Christ into our hearts. My Jesus, I believe you are really present in the blessed sacrament. I love you more than anything in the world, and I hunger to receive you. Since I cannot receive communion at this moment, feed my soul at least spiritually. I unite myself to you now as I do when I actually receive you. Never let me drift away from you. Let us pray. May this heavenly mystery, O Lord, restore us in mind and body, that we may be co-heirs in glory with Christ, to whose suffering we are united, whatever we proclaim his death, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now at the hour of our death. Amen. Just your homework. Remember, Christianity is cross. Nothing in our lives as Christians is going to be easy. Nothing. If you want to follow Jesus as our Savior, we need to have the cross as a sign for our salvation.
do not deny the cross and think everything is going to be easy in my life. Amen? Amen? God is all we need. He is all we need. Just start to believe. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go forth. The Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Have a wonderful week. Thank you. God bless you all. The song of going forth is Sing of the Lord's Goodness. Sing of the Lord's goodness, Father of all wisdom. Come to him and bless his name. Mercy he has shown us, his love is forever. Faithful to the end of days. Find the way to fly. Come then, all you nations, sing of your Lord's goodness. Melodies of praise and thanks to God. Ring out the Lord's glory, praise him with your music. Worship him and bless his name. Power he has wielded, honor is his garment, risen from the snares of death. His word he has spoken, one bread he has broken, new life he now gives to all. Come and all you nations sing of your Lord's goodness, melodies of praise and thanks to God. Ring out the Lord's glory, praise him with your music, worship him and bless his name.